here to deliver the word. Bradley, can you carry that down on the other side? Yes, thank you. I have too many Bibles and books that I need to see in front of me, so we're going to grab the table real quick. But um, that's not to overwhelm you. It's just today um, the Lord has given us a very specific word that I, I'm praying we can preach pretty swiftly because we want to have a moment with you after. How many of you love the Holy Spirit? That's a good answer. Hmm. How many of you at one point or another were confused about the role of the Holy Spirit in your life? Truth. Okay. I'm raising my hand too. Awesome. How many of you know who the Holy Spirit is? Okay. You have to answer. Who is the Holy Spirit? <laughs> She's like, oh, you're asking me. Yes. Part of the Trinity, the three in one. I heard that the, the Trinity described as an egg. An egg is an egg, but there are three parts to an egg, and that's one of the best ways to describe to kids what God is three in one, right? It's a really cool visual. But the Holy Spirit, he I is I tend a to like coffee. What? Coffee. Oh, coffee. Okay. I, I don't know. Do explain. Well, <laughs> how many of you are cream and sugar people in your coffee? Like, you got to have all, all the black coffee drinkers in the room. I do not understand you. I cannot get it. I've tried before, and it is just not for me. It's not the will of God for my life. Black coffee, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> That's strong. Okay. Some of you are just more spiritual than I am. It's probably what it is. Um, so I'm a cream and sugar guy. So I've used just this illustration of coffee. Because the Trinity is inseparable. Right. They can't, you can't separate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are one. They live in complete and holy union together. Oh and so God. I like, you know, you have your black coffee, then you put in your cream, then you put in your sugar. I don't know. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Right. Who is who? You can, It tastes you know, really good, too. If you want Jesus to be the sugar, if you want, I, you do what you want with <laughs> it. But once you put it all together, you cannot hmm. separate them back out. They're one. So three in one, inseparable, that's, that's my I like illustration it. for the Trinity. I can go with that. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very good much. job. And <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, that's really good. And I really Profound, I, isn't it? I really yeah. want coffee now, really I bad. Um, I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barb, can you uh, make me a cup before I go later today? Or, just, or save me one that you have already brewed. She is doing an amazing job with yes, our cafe, by the way. Wow. If you are a guest with us today, our cafe in the foyer, all of the proceeds, we do not make anything off of it. It all goes to missions. So everything that is above and beyond our expenses goes to support missions through mission, uh, coffee with a mission. So good. So back to the Holy Spirit. Um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit move in perfect unity together. And the Son promotes the Father. The Father promotes the Son. The Holy Spirit promotes, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, right? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ living and dwelling in us. The Holy Spirit was there at creation hovering over the waters. Whenever I see mist over water, like over a lake or in an early morning, I'm like, ooh, it's the Holy Spirit. It's just fog, but it still just reminds me of the Holy Spirit. And how the Holy Spirit honors Jesus, and Jesus honors the Spirit, and the Spirit, and the Father. And it's just like they can never work outside of each other, and they're in love with each other, and they're one. But they have separate roles that they do fulfill in our lives. Amen? Okay, so um, I love the Trinity. And I remember in my 20s really trying to understand the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was nine years old. And I remember I was in the altar at the old church. And I was, I don't know who was there. Do you remember who was there the night that I got baptized? He was preaching hellfire and brimstone, man. He was, he was, <laughs> yes, it was Charles Stark. He scared me a little bit. Um, but I remember <laughs> um, we need those kind of preachers in our lives. Okay? That's not a knock. Um, but I, re 
remember being nine years old and at one of these, one of these altars. And I asked Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill me. I want to pray in tongues. I want you to fill me. And I was crying, weeping. I would say begging because I was nine and I wanted the Holy Spirit to come. And I remember getting just a little phrase in tongues and I'm like, oh, I was just filled with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, and, and my innocence and my hunger was met in that moment. But it was a journey from nine years old to in my 20s really understanding the role of the Holy Spirit and how I am one with the Holy Spirit. And he is in me and I am in him. Does that make sense? Because he's the spirit of Christ. Jesus rose, took his seat. Pastor Travis did an incredible job teaching the intercession of Jesus last week. Unfortunately, that message muted halfway through the recording. and We lost the whole thing because the enemy doesn't like when Jesus is declared Lord over all. I'm telling you, it was, it was a powerful message. I'm like, you got to preach it again. Because we need to hear it again, and I want to I want to hear it again. So you have to. We're gonna have to do that. If you can turn in your Bibles. No, not Matthew. right now. Oh, okay. Not right now. Not yet. But he was talking about how Jesus ascended, right? We talked about this a few weeks ago on Easter. What happens next? Jesus rose again. Woo! Easter, yay! But what happens next? He ascends, and he has to ascend because what I read to start the morning, for the rivers of living water to flow through you, he had to take his seat so that he could send the Holy Spirit to flow through you like a river every single moment of every single day. That is the promise. And that's why he left so that the Holy Spirit could come. Amen? Good. Three of you agree. I'm, gl I'm glad. It gets me all excited. I love the Holy Spirit. And often we fear maybe confusing things or, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to go into that. But what we don't talk about him enough. But really, when we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. When we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit continually reveals Christ to us every single day. The Holy Spirit is not tongues. That's a gift from the Holy Spirit that flows as we receive him. But he's not tongues. He's not a gift. He's a person. Cool? It's true. And how amazing is it that Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you alone. Isolation is of the devil. If you're trying to do life without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit, you're not living in the fullness of what Jesus paid for. Come on. He doesn't want you to live in isolation. He doesn't want you to just be my way in the highway. He wants you to live in full surrender where Jesus is Lord and the Holy Spirit is moving through you. It's a glorious thing. It's a glorious thing. Hallelujah. So, Today we've experienced, you can step up closer to me. I feel like you're like in a weird Thanks, spot. Thanks. <laughs> we've been talking all week, the Lord, in the, just spending time with the Lord all week. Lord, how do you want us to deliver this? And this is what we felt like the Holy Spirit was saying. So have fun with us because it's been a fun week of discovery and just want to articulate well what the Lord wants to say today. So Jesus, I ask you to speak through your Holy Spirit, through our mouths, through your word. You are the living word. You are the logos. You are everything we need. Reveal to our hearts today your truth, your power, and your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Trav, tell us about the three baptisms. I'll do this part, but you tell them about that there are three baptisms. Have you already mentioned these today? Nope. You haven't? In prayer we did, but not right now. Raise your hand if you know what the three distinct baptisms in the New Testament are for the New Testament, the new covenant believer. They were here earlier. Three. Everyone's like, I know two. What's a third? Well, we typically don't refer to the salvation moment as baptism. Salvation is, through the Holy Spirit, a baptism into Jesus. The Holy Spirit, Leslie said, it continually testifies to and reveals Jesus. So when you ask...
ask Jesus into your life, you are baptized into Christ. And then, as we've experienced today, there is water baptism and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit draws us into Christ. We then baptize in water, and then Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, or John testified about Jesus. He said, he will baptize you with the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit and fire. So Jesus is the one who then baptizes us into his Holy Spirit. So just so you know, we're not crazy in making this up. Jesus went through these three baptisms himself. Just like you and your salvation were conceived by the Holy Spirit, right? At salvation, the Holy Spirit is the one that does the initial work, that starts to, like, move on your heart, that you start to feel this, like, tug, like something stirring in me. I need, that's the Holy Spirit at work in you. The Holy Spirit isn't absent until the baptism. The Holy Spirit is present at salvation, okay? So the Holy Spirit works on you, and you begin to know, I need Jesus, and you receive him, and you're baptized into Jesus. You receive his forgiveness. You receive his salvation. That is complete and full, lacking nothing. When you're baptized into Jesus, the Holy Spirit does the initial work. I just lost my entire train of thought. I know what I was saying. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> comparing Jesus. So Jesus, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of Mary, correct? So Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, baptism number one. Then Jesus, he is our perfect example, yes? Everything about him is our perfect example. And so then Jesus, he was baptized in water and said, do this, follow me in this. This is representing a testimony of what's happening on the inside. I can't see on your insides, Holly, but when you lay down in this water and you rise up, I know something's happening on the inside because, you know, nobody's going to get in this tank just for fun, right? Well, kids might, but for just to swim around. But we're doing this because of an inward change, because of an inward shift towards and the, the salvation of Jesus. So then we lay down and we are baptized, immersed in water. Because Jesus was immersed in water. And what happened to Jesus after that? What was the third experience that he received after he was baptized in water? Before he started his ministry, before he went out, before he went and began to declare that he was the son of God, he needed the Holy Spirit. And when he was baptized in water, the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And he was baptized in the Holy Spirit in that moment. If Jesus is our perfect example, then he is our perfect way. Then we need to move in the baptism of salvation, the baptism in water, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It gets me so excited. I can't talk. Woo! Because he, he's our example. We're not teaching something that we're just Pentecostals and we love this part of the Bible. This is who we are as believers. The day of Pentecost is a day to celebrate, not because we're Pentecostal, but because the church was birthed. Because at salvation, they met Jesus. And then they received the water baptism. And then Jesus, he ascended into heaven. He said, I'm going to send the promise of the Father. And then I want you to go, ye therefore, into all the world and preach the gospel. Right? So the same pattern, the same rhythm is for us. And is it for all believers or just for some select few? Was it just for the apostles that got saved and walked with him then? Or is it for you now, today? Okay, that's, that's where we are. We are living epistles. The word of God is being written through your life. Come on. I'm going to say that again. We are living epistles. The epistle is a letter written in the word of God. You are the living word of God. You are living out Jesus every moment of every day in 2023. You are a living letter. Isn't that amazing? Oh, man. God is so good. Did you want to say something? <laughs> I, 
I heard it said earlier this week, the presence of the Lord for thousands of years lived within the stones of Jerusalem. Now the presence lives in living stones. Isn't that good? The baptism in the Holy Spirit is not optional. Unfortunately, the church has made it optional. Jesus prophesied multiple times throughout his earthly ministry the coming of the Holy Spirit. He said, it is better for you that I go so that the promise of the Father will come. Yet we have relegated the baptism in the Holy Spirit to an option for the believer. You can live with it, you can live without it. Can we just walk you through quickly what Jesus had to say about the Holy Spirit? Go to John chapter 7. You can turn there and get there on your phone. But we need to hear what Jesus has to say because if Jesus is perfect theology, if Jesus is our perfect example, what does he have to say when it comes to the Holy Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit? The baptism in the Holy Spirit is not so that you and I can speak in tongues. That is a profound gift that we receive through the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is not so that we can prophesy, not so that we can move in faith or in gifts of healing, power for discernment. The baptism in the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, was for one purpose. What was that? You're all scared. Power to witness. Power to witness. And with that power to witness flows the prophetic, flows the gift of tongues, flows the words of knowledge, flows dreams and visions. But it's for you to tell someone. Okay. To demonstrate to them. I just got to get animated. John 7, 37 through 39. On the last day of the feast... The great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now he said, now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Go to Luke chapter 11. Let me just say this. The only way to receive from the river yeah. is to be in Jesus. The only way for the river of God to flow through you, the world cannot give you this power, this authority, only Jesus. Without Jesus, we're dry and empty, right? But with Jesus, we have a river of living water flowing through us. Can I clarify something I said? Power to witness is the purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But as Bradley will tell you, Pastor Bradley, witnessing is far more than just telling somebody about Jesus. Power to witness, witness means to demonstrate the nature and character of Jesus. So you witness by healing. You witness through prophetic words. You witness through demonstrations of power. All of these are given as the result of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, gifts that are available to us to to walk in, to move in. But as Leslie said, Jesus, before he began his public ministry, he needed the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Before he sent the disciples out into the world following his resurrection, he said, whoa, 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 wait, go into Jerusalem and wait. Because something is coming that you need to fulfill the commission I've just given to you. Luke 11, 9 through 13. Okay. All right, I'm going to read this out of the Passion Translation. So it is with your prayers, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll discover. 
Knock on heaven's door and it will one day open for you. Every persistent person will receive what he asks for. Every persistent seeker will discover what he needs. And everyone who knocks persistently will one day find an open door. Let me ask you this. Do you know of any father who would give his son a snake on a plate when he asked for a serving of fish? Of course not. Do you know of any father who would give his daughter a spider when she asked for an egg? Of course not. If imperfect parents know how to lovingly care for their children and give them what they need, how much more will your perfect heavenly father give the Holy Spirit's fullness when his children ask him? So in that first part of the text, it says, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For anyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, right? That's not talking about just getting your prayers answered. That's talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. When you ask for the Holy Spirit, you will receive the Holy Spirit. When you seek more of the Holy Spirit, you will get more of the Holy Spirit. When you knock on the door for the Holy Spirit, you will receive him to come in. It is a promise. And he says it's, he's not teasing. Okay? And then if you jump into Acts 1, 4 through 5. Travis already referenced this verse. Acts 1, 4 through 5. And while staying with them... He ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. This is after Jesus ascended. These are Jesus' words. But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Then Jesus ascended. He had to take his seat. For the spirit of God to fill the saints. That's not the scripture. That was just something that Trav wrote right there. But I want to say this. Why these two verses are important. Ask and you will find. Seek. Knock. How quick are we to give up on receiving a touch from the Holy Spirit? Well, I didn't feel anything. Well, I prayed three days in a row and nothing happened. When Jesus spoke to the disciples on the day of Pentecost, he said, go to Jerusalem and, go to Jerusalem and, I believe in the life of a believer, there are going to be seasons of waiting for the Holy Spirit, seasons of listening, seasons of prayer where you are waiting and it's worth the wait. Don't give up if you are still in the waiting. It doesn't mean the Holy Spirit hasn't already poured out on you, but there's always more. And we'll talk about that in a second. But how many of us give up? We stop asking. We stop seeking. And I, and I believe seeking is not just relegated to, oh, God, please help me understand. It's opening the scriptures. It's reading the living word and saying, okay, show me what you want to show me. Teach me about you, Holy Spirit. It's you taking your Bible and going through the book of Acts and underlining every time the Holy Spirit is mention, mentioned. You want to understand more about the Holy Spirit? Open the scriptures. Spend time pouring over those places where you feel confused because God is not the God of confusion. And the Holy Spirit is not confusing. He's very simple. He's the Spirit of Christ here to empower the saints. And Jesus said to them, go and wait for the power. So I beseech you, that's a really old word, that means beg you, don't give up. Don't stop waiting. Don't stop knocking. Keep on seeking the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't mean that, I want to say this clearly, it's not that you haven't received the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. You co-labor with him every day. But it's in those situations where you need a word from heaven to move. Okay, say you have a job that you're getting offered, and you need to know, Holy Spirit, is this you? Should I say yes or should I say no? I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to wait on you. Jesus, speak to me right now. That's what I'm talking about. Inviting the Holy Spirit into the places where we need understanding. Inviting the Holy Spirit into the places where we need power. We're working with a coworker who hates God, hates him. 
but you're right there next to him. That's when we ask, we seek, and we knock. We need a word from you, Holy Spirit. We need your power to flow in us, right? Does that make sense? It's a daily living river that is always flowing, and we get to partner with the Holy Spirit. We can't really pray actually at all without the Holy Spirit. We've been in this season of prayer and teaching on prayer. You can't pray without the Holy Spirit. There's that initial salvation cry prayer that happens, and then from then on out, you have a partner in prayer, and that is the Holy Spirit. He prays with us. He intercedes for us. I'm getting ahead of myself. The Holy Spirit is in me for my benefit. I am baptized. The Holy Spirit is on me for your benefit. So real quick, let's look at this. Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost was a national festival of thanksgiving for the wheat harvest. Pentecost, did, the word did not originate on that day. It was a, a national Jewish festival. There were thousands and thousands, probably millions of people that came into Jerusalem on this day. Um, by this time, 120 followers of Jesus were in one place together. There are many theologians that believe they were at the temple. Some believe they were in the upper room where Passover took place. It really doesn't matter. They, on that day, tongues of fire descended and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Somebody tell me what the word baptism means. To be immersed, just like we experience today. To immerse, to be fully covered by something. Baptism, a great way to understand Holy Spirit baptism, like Leslie just said, when you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit indwells you. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. You cannot, we are the righteousness of God. We are his holiness. You can't be holy apart from the Holy Spirit living within you. Right? So the Holy Spirit takes up residence within you. It's like drinking a cup of water. You now have water in you. But when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's like you dive into the ocean. You are now immersed. You are consumed with this water. The power to witness, the power to demonstrate who Jesus is. I love how Bill Johnson says it. The Holy Spirit is in me for my benefit. He's on me for yours. The Holy Spirit is in me for my benefit. The Holy Spirit is on me for the world. To demonstrate Jesus to the world. I love the Old Testament. And I love the book of Joel. My Bible, for some reason, the found, the, the, what's this called? The binding is like broken right at Joel chapter 2. And every time I open my Bible it, and I go to that area, it opens automatically because the binding is just like worn out right there. But it's where... The Holy Spirit is prophesied. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and the female servant in those days, I will pour out my spirit. The Holy Spirit is promised. The Holy Spirit is necessary. And then in the book of Acts, if you keep on reading, man, I just, I was like, oh, we got to add this scripture. And we've got to add that scripture. It's just so good. Acts chapter 19, 1 through 7, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But, but Paul is talking to the believers in Ephesus who had been saved and he asked, did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And they responded, no, we were baptized into John and the forgiveness of sins. And he says, oh, yeah, it's time. It's not in scripture, but. Paul said John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord in water. 
Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. And if you look at Acts, this is post-Jesus. This is the promise being fulfilled. You are living in the days of the fulfillment. You are living in the days where the Spirit has come. The words of Joel have been fulfilled, and he lives inside of you. Woo! Fire of God. In Acts chapter 4, they were in a situation Peter and John were in prison, and they had just been released at the prayers of the church, and they began to pray and rejoice. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. These are the people that were filled with the Holy Spirit at the day of Pentecost. Then you keep going in Acts chapter 4, and the Holy Spirit comes again, and the ground is shaken. Do we need the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Romans 8, 26 through 28. Listen, do not do life without Holy Spirit. Do not go another day without knowing your heart that the Holy Spirit has made his home inside of you. I, I do believe that when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, there is a positional change from Jesus being our Savior to Jesus being our Lord. From Jesus being our Savior, he saved us. But when we ask the Holy Spirit to baptize us in power, in his love, we are moving from Jesus, you're my Savior, to Jesus, you are my Lord. I will go where you send me. I will say what you want me to say. I will do what you've called me to do. I will be that witness. Does it always mean that I'm going to feel the way I feel right now? Woo! Let's go! Right? Okay, I want to read this to you. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Hallelujah. Do you have weak moments? Who is your help? Are you trying to do it by yourself? Are trying to power through on your own? Have you truly submitted your will to the Holy Spirit and said, I'm weak? Because it takes a dropping of the pride. Listen, pride has to go. Pride is poison. It will keep us from moving in the freedom of the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't want to look a certain way. I don't want to shake. I don't want to do this. I don't want to pray in tongues out loud. I don't want this to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to me. Hmm has to go. Pride has to fall. Let go. In my weakness, the Holy Spirit comes and he teaches me how to not be in pride, but be in humility. He teaches me how to not live in a prideful spirit, but in a humble, merciful, kind, and loving spirit. I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. I need his voice to be clear in my ears. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Do you ever feel that way? You're in the quiet place. You're like, oh, my goodness, I have no idea what to say right now. I mean, I, here's my list, Lord, but I don't even know. When you utter those words of desire, I don't know how to pray, but I'm going to partner with you right now, Holy Spirit. It is amazing what happens, what begins to flow from your mouth from your heart. It's not always tongues. Praying in the Spirit isn't just praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit is uttering what the Holy Spirit puts in your mouth out loud. That is praying in the Spirit. And sometimes it comes in our heavenly language, which is so much fun. And it's not um, a reward for good behavior praying in tongues. Let me just say that. Just continue to seek Him. Just continue to allow Him to flow through you, and tongues will be a natural part of that. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Have you ever heard a groaning in prayer? 
how beautiful it is to know that my Holy Spirit groans for me in prayer. That when I don't know how to pray and when I say I'm weak right now, I need you, Holy Spirit, and he intercedes on our behalf. He groans for us to the Father. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Holy Spirit, I'm unsure as to the will of God right now. Speak through me. Pray through me. I agree with heaven right now. And your will be done, Father. And we know that in all things God works. This is verse This is verse 28. Listen, he's saying, in my weakness, I know how to pray because the Holy Spirit takes hold and he prays through me. I need you, Holy Spirit. In my weakness, you are stronger. Pray through me. And then he says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. When we submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit, God works all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Are you willing to wait? Are you seeking the Holy Spirit this morning? We're going to pray for the baptism. I think it's been a minute since we've done this. So right now I want to ask everyone in the room to step out of your seat, every single person, and come forward. We're almost done, but this is worth the wait. I'm hungry. I'm ready for that good old picnic food. Praise God. But come on down. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 6, 8 says, pray in the spirit on all occasions. And like I said a few minutes ago, we could do a whole teaching on what praying in the Spirit means, but tongues is part of that. It's an evidence of the overflow of the Holy Spirit. But tongues isn't the only evidence. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control is an evidence that the Holy Spirit is your river. Listen, be healed in Jesus' name is the power of the Holy Spirit. And I was praying this week, we were talking a lot, and I'm like, Lord, how do you want us to do this? Because I believe, Acts 19, verse 7, we read it, Paul laid his hands on the believers and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. But who baptizes you in the Holy Spirit? Does Leslie baptize you in the Holy Spirit? It's because my hands are so great that if I lay my hands on you, you're going to get knocked in the Holy Spirit. No. Who baptizes you in the Holy Spirit? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. So I have a twofold call today. Even though you're all in the altar already, praise God. Thank you for being willing and submissive to the Holy Spirit in my voice. But I have a twofold request. If you have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you've never experienced the Spirit baptizing you in power and fire. Would you step to the front of the altar? Don't be scared. Okay? My second call that the Lord has put on my heart. I have prayed for so many people over the last year. And the Lord has continually said, are you praying in the spirit? Are you partnering with my spirit in prayer? And I ask... Have you prayed in tongues in a long time? Well, I did a year ago, or I was baptized when I was young, okay? Or I was, but I've been feeling a block. And the Lord showed me a picture of a dam in a river. And there's been things that have gotten in the way, right, of the river flowing through your heart freely. 
to where you can pray in tongues at any moment. You can connect with Holy Spirit. You don't feel disconnected. You don't feel a distance. Anybody ever feel a block in when they're praying and they're praying in the Spirit and you just feel like you're, tr you're trying to press through, but Mom, you told me that that happens to you occasionally. That's, there's nothing wrong with you, but the reality is the Holy Spirit wants to flow through you like a river. And so for, if you need a... Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came. Acts chapter 4, they received again and the ground was shook. If you want more of the Holy Spirit right now, you want the, the, the dams to be bursted in your life, the wells to be opened, the river to be free to flow, I want you to step up also towards the front. You're coming up here. Okay. <laughs> come on, don't be scared. I'm serious. Come. Don't be scared. You want more? You want more? You're just hungry for more? You, maybe you don't feel a block, but you're like, I want more? Okay, Leslie, come on over. Before we do any praying for each other, hold on, Dad. You're not ready yet. Before we do any laying on of hands, it is the Spirit of Christ. It is Jesus who baptizes you. And he says, ask. He says, seek. He says, knock, and the door will be open. So I want you to use your mouth, your heart, your words to say, Jesus, I want you to baptize me right now with your Holy Spirit and fire. Begin to lift your hands, close your eyes, and ask Holy Spirit to baptize you now. You use your words. Jesus, right now, baptism in the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here among us, that you are moving right now. Just ask. Keep asking. Don't stop. Holy Spirit, baptize me now. Baptize me now. Let your heart cry out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Church, if you are in the room and you're not asking for more, I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to prophesy over these ones right now. Just seek the heart of God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Thank you, Jesus. Receive now. Receive now. Rivers of living water are pouring through you now. Out of your mouth, out of your heart. If you hear words in your mind, let them flow out of your mouth. If you begin to hear the Holy Spirit give you a language, let it flow right now out of your mouth. Thank you, Lord. Continue to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, ministry team, if you could, we're going to do a laying on of hands. Stay where you are. Keep seeking. But we're going to come and we're going to lay hands on you. And we're going to pray over you the baptism in the Holy Spirit, just as Paul did. Receive the Holy Spirit. He is not holding back. He will not hold back from you this morning. He will not hold any good thing back. He is a good father who gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So right now, Holy Spirit, flow. Flow through the lives of these believers who have said yes to you. We pray your empowerment over them now in the name of Jesus. In the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. 
I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul. I can't contain. I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul. I can't contain. I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. 